How accurate is your 3D printer? This is a question I proposed four years ago to the 3D printing community with the release of my first clearance gauge. I had been searching for a way of quantifying 3D printer accuracy for my reviews and to sanity check what kind of detail these machines were capable of producing to help inform my designs. The version 2 tolerance test proved printability with gaps ranging from 0.5 millimeters all the way down to 0.15 and is my most popular model to date, having been downloaded over 10,000 times. And yet, only 1,000 of you found the secret video. Oi, who are you? How'd you find this video? In my opinion, that was 1,000 too many. But it's a design I've always wanted to improve on. The print time, three hours or so for a gauge on printer accuracy, it's a bit too long. And considering that people took the design as a challenge in itself, then I wanted to make it properly challenging. So it is with immense pleasure that I'm announcing the release of a brand new range of clearance and quality test models. This is the Clearance Castle. While it may look fairly innocent, this design exploits every trick in a 3D printing book to create a truly devilish test of 3D printer prowess. To storm the clearance castle, you must first lower the drawbridge with its 0.5 millimeter gaps. Easy. The next part though is anything but. To raise the portcullis, you must first solve the labyrinth tower, a miniature labyrinth puzzle with 0.3 millimeter gaps. Only once you've solved that can you raise the portcullis and claim your prize. The clearance castle is not for the unworthy, and due to all of its complex interlocking parts, it actually takes around four to five hours to print. So I designed these additional calibration models to go along with it. The clearance tower is incredibly useful for judging part accuracy quickly and prints in under an hour. It allows you to easily see what kind of clearances your 3D printer is capable of producing. You just slide the ring up and uh, wherever the number it reaches tells you the total surface to surface gap at that point. If it jams up anywhere below 0.15, then there's room for improvement. And if the tower comes apart completely, that's not a success. Your 3D printer is actually producing undersized parts and needs tweaking in the other direction. The idea of this test is to inform your design process so you know what kind of clearances you can realistically get away with. The drawbridge tests overhangs, bed adhesion, and um, bridging. <laughs> this model is a good example of how well you can expect your 3D printer to perform when producing delicate, detailed 3D prints. If you're able to reproduce these two with good results, then you're ready to take on the clearance castle. So let's take a closer look at this model printed on my original Ender 3 with a direct drive extruder mod in generic PLA+. It was printed on a very old, but still very usable, easy peelsy, flexible magnetic print surface. The accuracy of your first layer is critical to the success of print in place models in general, not just this model. So I highly recommend getting that perfect first. I preheat the nozzle and heat bed to printing temperature, then use a 0.2 millimeter feeler gauge to adjust my bed level and nozzle height. You can then add this offset to your G-code header if you like, or if you're lazy like me, just jog your printer in Z the same height as your feeler gauge and then do the leveling. In this pack, you'll also find a clearance card, which is a mega simplified quick printing test of first layer accuracy. Some squish is to be expected. Uh, you can compensate for it in your slicer and actually have a whole video on what's called elephant foot here if you're interested, but too much and the parts will just weld together and there's no point printing it because it just won't work. They need to all come away cleanly from each other and if you can achieve that with the clearance card, then you're good to go. You can find a link to the models in the video description below and please do share your results with me. I love to see them. The best way to do so is to tag me on Twitter at Makers Muse with your results or you can even tag me at Makers Muse on YouTube now if you want to film your uh, results and then share them with me. I have poured days of design work and many, many more into all the test models and prints to create this new test model that's both fun and challenging. I'll be using it moving forward to evaluate 3D printers and I really hope you enjoy printing it. I do want to note, however, that this isn't designed to test resin 3D printers. You could try and it might work, 
but they have very different design uh, considerations and characteristics, and they really do need their own range of test models. This is specifically designed for filament 3D printing. Here on Makers Muse, it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology, and it's your support that keeps this channel going. So, sincerely, thank you for watching. Catch you later, guys. Bye.